it's 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 the heart, it's love, it's human, just human like respect and love. I started playing the church organ when I was about 12 and um, I sang in a church choir since I was like about seven or something. And then I went to music lessons for 10 years and just developed that way. I was always kind of interested in rock music, but I wasn't a, a band person. I never bought records. I never bought a record in my life, I have to say. But I was really into singing, but I wasn't into playing a role. I wanted to play my role make it up myself, mm -hmm. you know. But it seemed to be kind of difficult to convince people that you're going to be a songwriter. And they're looking at you going, you can't make money out of that, you have to do cover songs. Or, And to me that was like, no, I'll go, you know, you know, go on the dole and get free money, but be in a band that you can write your own songs in, as opposed to playing in a pub and doing covers. And, you know, it was like, I kind of always believed in it, really believed in it. And, I remember I gave up my job, I gave up school, I gave up everything for it really at the time. They auditioned for me first. I went up and I said to them, OK boys, let me hear your stuff. And he started playing away and they had this singer and he was singing completely mental lyrics and really didn't have a very spectacular voice. You couldn't even hear the voice anyway. It was like da 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 da. Um, but I remember I liked the idea that these three guys are into writing stuff. That's great, because that was really hard to come by. And I liked the, the way that they were into kind of, you know, the Smiths and they were into like the whole real guitars, real music, as opposed to, hello, let's get a tacky keyboard and press a drum machine and la 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 la. You know, to me that was so twee. So I liked, I thought that they, it, the, the band had kind of really potential and had a good, really good bass there, you know, to work on, but it really was a bass. You know, it was like musical bass. It's the linger originally. Yeah, your man used to sing a different song. I never heard it, but the, it was like a four chord sequence. Mm -hmm. And uh, your man sang this weird thing like, hello, uh, you know, kind of the cure disintegration, kind of hit da kind of thing, you know, over the top. I knew I had a talent. I always knew since I was a kid. So I knew it was kind of dangerous. I knew that it would attract bad people. It would attract people who want, who know that you're kind of innocent and, and you haven't a clue and that would butter you up and then they'd uh, try and rip you off and they could really hurt you and not care. So, I mean, we've had our fair share of experiences with that and that makes you stronger and wiser. But uh, I had a clue really about the record thing, but I was just very cagey. I mean, one of the worst things to do is kind of sign contracts without thinking about it, and that's something that we did as teenagers. But we learned that that was like the worst mistake, you know. Like, you know, it can cost you a lot. It can cost you a lot of pain and grief and time to be associated with something you don't want to be. I'd been to London when I was 12 to see my sister. She lived in a, in a flat over there for ages. So uh, I had an idea what London was like, but the guys hadn't. And it was like, Paddy goes to London or what? It was so funny. Like, we were just like going to the tubes and we'd be like hanging. Whoa, what are these for? You know, kind of thing. And it was just a great experience. But as far as um, the, the end of business and the band went, I mean, to us, it was just a big party. We hadn't a clue what was going on. We were just like, oh, we have a gig tonight, we better play. We didn't think about the business. We never thought about what was happening. It was just like, we have a gig and it's great. Sometimes, you know, you get an article and you read it and somebody says something horrible about you and somebody doesn't know you. And, and that hurts, it does. You know, you're in a good mood and it's like, why does that person want to misrepresent me? Why does that person detest me? Because I'm successful and that person isn't, probably. And then I get pissed off and I'm like, I'm depressed. And my husband goes, don't think about it. It's stupid, it's a stupid industry thing, you know? And I'm going, yeah, okay. So it's, uh, it's important to try and, you know, be strong mentally and not let things bother you like that. Because, I mean, all I want to do is be an artist and write songs, make records. I want to write about the way I feel, you know. It's what I love doing. I played around a lot with them. I just found them all very gullible. And uh, they thought I was gullible, I thought they were gullible, so I decided to give them a trip about it, you know, to kind of go, I haven't a clue. I'm Irish and I don't know. I'm the innocent country girl. So I used to play up on it, all right, to shock them. And I used to love looking at them when they go, really? And I'd be like, yeah. 
and I'm completely lying. <laughs> and to me, it was just a game. To me, you know, a lot of the time, press is just a big game. Journalists, the whole thing, it's just a silly game. You know, sometimes you're up there and they love you, and sometimes they hate you, and sometimes you're a bitch, and sometimes you're a goddess. And to me, it has nothing to do with what I do. When you're out there on the road and you're on a bus, it seems to be the ultimate free life, you know? Nobody knows you out there. Nobody bothers you. You're on a bus every day. You're in a different city. You wake up in a different city. You do your gig. Uh, you, you're on stage. You're a, people love you. People are throwing flowers at you. And you know that it's going to be very hard to get back to reality after a, a dose of being famous. And I love you and people crying in front of you. And suddenly, I remember I had to come back to Ireland where... I had some really bad kind of personal problems at the time. And I remember I wrote that song, So Cold in Ireland, and it wasn't really a reference to the country, it was a reference to my personal life in the country. So, and, but I, I didn't want, I really feared coming back. But that does happen when you go on tour for a long time. You kind of fear the confrontation and coming back thing, unless you've got a good life back there, you know? And at the time, I think my personal life was so bad and I didn't see, I didn't want to come back, you know. You've been away from home for so long and everything has changed. It was really hard. It was like I went away being not known and not anything and now I'm famous, you know. And now we sold a million records in America and, you know, and if our band, what happened to our band was very spectacular. I mean, I mean, we have three million sold now worldwide probably, you know. And that doesn't happen with bands. It's an awful lot. So it was a real bang, overnight vibe. It wasn't like... Our first album sold this many, the second one grew, which is like huge. So it, it did take a very strong head. Well, at Christmas, I was really, really upset. I was really down. I wrote No Need to Argue. And it was, I think it was one of the hardest times of my life, I'd say, you know. It's funny, you know, you're getting famous and you're selling records and you're 22 years old and you're supposed to be happy. But I was so unhappy. Like, I was just, but I'm just, I'm married and I'm happy now. People are going, yeah, this band sold that many. Pea size, and you're gone. Is that all? So we're sold, we're selling a lot of records, like, and then they're like, yeah. So you're gone. That's good. And and you don't think like I'm becoming famous. You don't think that though. You think we're selling records, great. We make money out of that. <laughs> How much am I going to get? Like, am I going to get more than a hundred pounds a week? Kind of thing, because that's what you live on. Like when you get signed, you get your little hundred quid a week or whatever, and you live on that. And it's like, and we're all kind of you know, into our partying and into clothes and stuff. And it's like, maybe we get an extra 20 quid a week, can we get a raise? Because <laughs> <You know? laughs> we're selling records. We, we didn't really know much about it. Like, you don't think, at the time, I never thought about, like, things like royalties and stuff. I don't go to Limerick anymore because it, it does get to a point where a lot of your friends change towards you. And that, that you got to let go then. You know, you have to let go of those people because if they start to treat you differently just because you're a celebrity, that's it's terrible, it's like... And, you know, I remember coming back to Limerick and I just remember a guy that I used to know really well in a band, we used to be really good friends. I was gone for, like, one year and your man was afraid to approach me and he was coming up going, Hi, do you remember me? I'm, um... And I'm going, yeah, of course. OK. And he's really nervous. It's like, we used to be friends. What are you getting nervous for? And it's kind of hurtful in a way. You're kind of hurt because you, you don't want people to treat you like some kind of a, a new person. You're still the same person, you just sold records. People don't always associate the Cranberries with Ireland. I don't know why, actually. I suppose because they, maybe the sound of like linger and stuff isn't very Irish and they, the look of the band isn't Irish. We don't look. And we don't, I don't wear T-shirts that say, Hi, I'm Irish. And I see lots of bands do that and lots of performers and um, and not into that. I'm very patriotic, but not to a degree that I would blandly wear the thing, you know, on purpose. To me, it's like you don't have to wear a T-shirt. Just, just be yourself, you know. I think a lot of Irish bands, particularly, you know, up around Dublin and stuff, want to be American. It's like, why do you want to be American? Why aren't you proud to be what you are? Why can't you write songs as an Irish person? I mean, why is it like, where's the accent coming from? And, you know, that kind of thing. Do you know the way, you know, I remember like when I was a teenager, you know, you come to see a band and you got your man going, I was there when we were young, yeah. And there's this accent and you're going, where's the accent coming from? Like, 
you know, and to me it's like, I think it's just because people don't see what they have, you know, they want what, you know, the far off hills are greener kind of thing. Mm. It's actually not about the north of Ireland, Zombie's about the death of a child, a three year old boy, that's what it's about. It happens to be the north of Ireland situation that made it occur. Could have been me on tour in Bosnia and seeing some babies out there and writing a song about that, which actually, uh, something that I was kind of writing when I was in hospital. I was, you know, the Bosnia thing. It's just, it's not politics. It's, it's the heart. It's love. It's human, just human, like respect and love. Leave the kids alone, kind of, you know. What do you make of the recent ceasefire? It'd be, be really great if it's uh, true, you know. Find it. Hard to believe that it's going to stop, though, you know, I really do, because, you know, I've learned so much about it in school. It's like drum down your throat in school when you're in Ireland, and you, you realise it when you travel, you know, when you're in a pub and you're out, and the next thing you start bitching about the red coats and stuff, you know what I mean? It really is drum down your throat and stuff. The Icicle Melts is about a little boy, Jamie Bulger, actually, and Zombie would have been about the Warrington thing then, which is a little while later, and... You know, it's like kind of, it's kind of awkward because you don't want to write it about a specific person. And get, you know, you, you're just writing it about a thing, a specific thing, like man's inhumanity to man and to child, which is worse. It really had a sense of up your arse, you know. Mm. <laughs> it really had a sense of gratification and, <laughs> you know, kind of thing. It was just like, you know, you're, you're sitting there and you're bold, you feel bold. You feel like, told you. You know, and you feel like going to the press. Didn't need your front covers, guys, you know. Keep them. <laughs> and it's like, and your manager's going, don't be saying that to the horse. And I'm like, very, very, very gratifying when you sell records and you know it's not because you're the press band or because you're the trendy babe. You sell them because you proved a point yourself. You proved the point. The title of the first album has been proven. And the title of the second will be. <laughs> Hi, we're the Cranberries. And this is our new single, The Zombie. It's actually not about the North of Ireland. The zombie is about the death of a child, a three year old boy. That's what it's about. It happens to be the North of Ireland situation that made it occur could have been me on tour in Bosnia and seeing some babies out there and writing a song about that, which actually uh, something that I was kind of writing when I was in hospital. I was, you know, the Bosnia thing. It's just, it's not politics. It's, it's the heart. It's love. It's human, just human, like, respect and love. Leave the kids alone, kind of, you know. What do you make of the recent ceasefire at all? It'd be really great if it's uh, true, you know. Find it hard to believe that it's going to stop though, you know, I really do, because, you know, I've learned so much about it in school, it's like drum down your throat in school when you're in Ireland, and you, you realise it when you travel, you know, when you're in a pub and you're out, and the next thing you start bitching about the red coats and stuff, you know what I mean? It really is drum down your throat and stuff. The Icicle Melts is about a little boy, Jamie Bulger, actually, and Zombie would have been about the Warrington thing then, which is a little while later, and you know, it's like kind of, it's kind of awkward because you don't want to write it about a specific person. And get, you know, you, you're just writing it about a, a thing, a specific thing, like man's inhumanity to man and to child, which is worse.